When I was growing up, my mother always told me that I had ants in my pants. Uh, I was always excited or, or, or agitated about something and I just couldn't sit still for a second. Not much has changed. <laughs> Even now, I really struggle with this idea of being still. My mind is always active, kind of always looking ahead to the next thing. And I, I have to really force myself to live in the present. And to be honest, I find quiet reflection, you know, quiet time, I find it really, really difficult. And yet, in a world where things are moving so fast, I realize that sometimes in life you have to stop before you can truly begin. And that pressing pause to be still and to reflect is often the best way for us to move forward in life. My wife Jess has two tattoos on her forearms and uh, they're taken, it's two Hebrew words taken from Psalm 46 verse 10 and you may know the verse it says this, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. The, the words on Jess's arms are in the Hebrew, uh, Rafa and Yada. Rafa in Hebrew means to be still, but it's, it's more than just being still or being silent. Rafa means to let go. It actually means to slacken your wrist. It's like the ultimate trust to let go and to trust God. Rafa. Yada, the second word, means to know, to be still and to know. But again, the English kind of fails us here because yada is a knowing, but a, an intimate knowing. Almost you could say a sexual knowing, like you would say, I know my wife, I know my spouse. Be still and know. Rafa and yada. <laughs> there is something so powerful, I think, about stillness. Stillness is really the key to unlocking so many other strengths and gifts and, and aspects of our lives. If we want to be better parents, we must learn to be still, to be patient, to listen. I have so far to go here. To take a step back when the kids are driving us crazy so that we don't react out of anger, but rather out of love. And it's not just parenting. I mean, it's, this is, it's stillness is the key in all of our relationships so that we don't make speeches that we will one day regret. So that we can think about our thinking, identify why we're feeling this way, or, or label the emotions or the thoughts, and devise a way forward that is proactive and not reactive. And the reality is, you can't do any of that at speed. You have to be still and know. Stillness is the key when it comes to handling our finances. So that we, before we make that impulsive decision or that purchase, we pause, we think. We prioritize and we make wise, God-honoring decisions. Stillness is the key. And the trick is to finding stillness in the midst of the noise. Being still is not about, you know, retreating to your log cabin in the woods. <laughs> I mean, that can be super helpful, but it's not sustainable. We have to learn how to find stillness in the midst of the buzzing and the conversations, and the whizzing, and the whirling, and the lift clubs, and the meetings, and the voices in our head, and the constant pinging of the devices in our pockets. Stillness is the key. These daily devotions that we've been doing during this series, History Repeated, are entitled Lessons from the Early Church. And, and there really is so much from the early church days and from the life of Jesus and his early followers that we can learn about stillness. And it wasn't because they didn't, you know, have a lot going on. I mean, if you read the book of Acts, if you read the Gospels, these guys were busy. They had places to go, things to do. Mark 6 verse 31, it says, Jesus says to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest for a while. And then I find the next line so interesting. Why? Because for many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while, says Jesus. To Martha, who was frantically busying herself in the kitchen preparing a meal, Jesus says this, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. What had Mary chosen? Well, simply to be still. And to sit at the feet of Jesus. Martha, you're worried about so, so many things, upset about so many things, and few things are needed, or indeed only one. How true is that 
of our own everyday lives. How true is that of mine? I mean, I fret and I worry about so many things. I am not still. I have ants in my pants. <laughs> and the thing about worry, it's been said that worry is like a rocking chair. It gives you something to do. It just doesn't take you anywhere. What is needed is stillness. To be still and to know. Rafa and Yada. <laughs> course there are many ways to do this but this video is not a how-to video not intended to be you're going to have to go and figure that out on your own to find and build and cultivate habits of stillness and reflection and quiet in your own lives for me if I'm honest I've got this right and I've got this wrong in so many ways over the years Right now, I'm trying to do the Bible in one year with Nikki Gumbel. It's on U version, uh, Audible. It's a, it's a, it's a free app. You can listen to it. And so when I drive to work in, every morning now, I listen to scripture and that's been incredibly helpful for me. Another practice, which I started doing just recently is that we've moved to a new place and it's quite close to the beach. And so on my way home, I stop off at the, the parking lot by the beach. And for five minutes, I allow myself five minutes just to breathe out my day. And I watch the surf and I watch the waves. It calms me. There's something about the sea that does that. And what I sometimes try to do is I try and make a list of just five things that I was grateful for that day or in my life. And, and you know what? It takes five minutes. It's just a simple thing. But I can't tell you how much of a difference it has made to my attitude and to my posture when I get home and the kids come running. And sometimes I may have lingered there for 10 or 15 minutes and then I get a call from Jess. Where are you? Get back here. These kids are home. No. But, but it's these simple things. It's the small things that make a big difference. So as we close, here's my challenge to you today. For those of you watching this, whenever you're watching this, uh, just do something for five minutes. Just five minutes today. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. Just today. Five minutes. And if you can, do it the next day and the day after that. Just five minutes. Five minutes to be still and to know. And who knows what God might do in those five minutes that may just change the trajectory of your life and your relationships. Because stillness is the key. Amen.